Hi everyone and welcome back to our build channel. On today's build video we're going to show you how to assemble our double wide gantry actuator. So this is a really cool design. It utilizes our double wide gantry plate with our extreme wheels on the inside of our track for a rigid platform here and mounting configurations to the plate itself. We've got threaded holes that allow for mountings of cameras and different aspects for any type of build that you can imagine guys. This actuator in itself has actually been a design for a couple of our builds. We utilize this for a z-axis and it works perfect for mounting of our router spindle mount. It's an excellent design guys. Super excited to go ahead and get started so let's go ahead and start building. Alright guys so on this first step we're gonna go ahead and assemble our mini extreme wheels. So you should have eight of your extreme wheel kits inside you should see these contents you're going to have two of your mini v bearings two of your mini v precision shims and one of your nylon hex nuts and of course your mini v shell so i'm going to go ahead and show you how to assemble this wheel and then we're going to go ahead and assemble our additional seven wheels so to start off just grab your wheel shell one of your mini v bearings you're going to go ahead and pop that into place you should hear it snap into the polycarbonate you're going to go ahead and put your mini V precision shim in the middle here. And then you're going to snap in your additional bearing. And that is the assembly for our mini V extreme wheel. Just keep these to the side and we will use these on future steps. All right, so let's go ahead and move on to the next step, guys. All right, so on this next step, we're going to go ahead and assemble our anti backlash nut block to our double wide gantry plate. So in this step, we're going to go ahead and unload our contents of our anti-backlash nut block kit. You should see a grub screw along with your thin hex nut, as well as two of your nylon hex nuts. And then you're going to need to locate two of our 3mm aluminum spacers and two of our M5 20mm screws. So what I've done here to the anti-backlash nut block is I've went ahead and put in the grub screw. And basically, I'm just kissing the Delrin here on uh, the C portion of the anti-backlash nut block and then I've simply just threaded on the thin hex nut and this is to prevent any backlash in your system so if you haven't done so go ahead and feed that grub screw in just kiss the back of your anti-backlash nut block and thread on that hex nut alright so let's go ahead and continue with the assembly taking notice here to our double wide gantry plate we have our eccentric holes here which are slightly larger than our fixed wheels. Now these holes have to align like so. So our anti-backlash nut block is going to be placed into these two top holes. So let's go ahead and feed our M5 screws through these holes. And I'm just going to rotate this plate around. And then we're going to go ahead and add our 3mm aluminum spacers to each screw and we're going to place our anti-backlash nut block onto our screws making sure that these circular holes here are facing down because we need our hex grooves for our nylon hex nuts and we're just going to place our anti-backlash nut block what I try to do is center it as much as possible here in the double wide gantry plate so as you can see how it's seated now is how you guys want to match it alright so let's go ahead and take our nylon hex nuts and place these on each screw and basically I'm just placing those for right now and then I'm going to go ahead and tighten this down alright perfect so make sure that your anti-backlash nut block is straight if it's not straight guys your lead screw is not going to feed through this anti-backlash nut block so make sure that it's straight and that assembly is complete so let's go ahead and move on to the next step Alright guys, moving forward here. On this step we are going to assemble our wheels to our double wide gantry plate. So in this step we're going to require 8 of our Mini V Extreme Wheels, which we've already assembled. We're also going to need 8 of our nylon hex nuts and 8 of our Mini V Precision Shims, which we've carried over from our wheel kits. 8 of our M5 25mm screws, 4 of our 6mm centric spacers, four of our six millimeter aluminum spacers and of course our double wide gantry assembly that we have so far our tooling we're just going to require our ball driver and spanner wrench alright so let's go ahead and get started here 
we're going to feed our screws through each one of these holes so we have our eccentric and fixed side and we have a total of eight holes so let's go ahead and feed our 25 millimeter screws through each one of these holes All right, and then just flip this plate over. And let's go ahead and start our stacking configuration, guys. So starting with our fixed side first, which is going to be on our left. As you can see, the slightly larger holes here on the right are for our centrics. We have a lip here on our eccentric spacer that's going to lock into that additional space. And that way we can rotate this eccentric to tighten and add preload to our track. All right, so let's go ahead and put on our six millimeter aluminum spacers here on the left side. And then add your mini V precision shims next. And then add your mini V extreme wheels. All right, so that completes our configuration here for our fixed side of wheels. So now we're gonna move on to the eccentric side. So making sure that our eccentric is fully open. So as you can see here, we have a six millimeter stamp. This indicates a fully open position of our eccentric. And basically the way that this eccentric works is like a cam. We have an offset center here, which allows for tightening to our track. So we want to leave this to a fully open position, which is going to be facing away from our fixed wheels. So just like so. And we're going to do the same thing for our additional screws. Then add your mini V precision shims. And next, your mini V extreme wheels. All right, then we're going to cap all of these wheels with our nylon hex nuts. So, what I do is just thread these on top of each one of our screws, it just helps with the assembly process. All right, perfect. So now let's go ahead and tighten these wheels. Just tilt your plate to the side. Grab your spanner wrench and your ball driver, and let's tighten these down, guys. All right, perfect guys. So now we have our wheels assembled. What we need to do now is make sure that our centrics are still fully open. So as you can see here, inevitably these will move as you're tightening them. So I'm just gonna make sure that they are fully open. So let's go ahead and make that adjustment real quick. All right, perfect. All right, so that assembly is complete. Let's go ahead and move on to the next step. Alright guys, so on this next step we're going to go ahead and adjust our centrics for our 250mm C-beam and we're going to slide this into the track of the C-beam. Now as you can see here, I have too much preload on the wheels so we're going to have to slightly adjust the eccentrics. So what I'm going to do is rotate each one of these to the right. And make sure to rotate all your centrics in the same direction. That way it's just easier to know how much preload you've put on or you're taking off. All right, so let's give that a shot. All right, so now that we have our centrics adjusted here, the double white gantry slides in nicely. Basically, what we're feeling for is a tight lock to the track, which just actually feels pretty good. But if I hold the C-beam down while I lift up on the plate, I actually feel some play. So I'm going to go ahead and adjust those eccentrics and add some more preload. So essentially what you're trying to do with these eccentrics is find the perfect lock to your track. So you don't want too much pressure on the wheels and you don't want the wheels to be loose on the track either. With this configuration it's a little bit more difficult since the wheels are riding inside the track of the C-beam, but it's still the same concept. You're just going to have to feel on the gantry plate on the outside. So I'm just going to adjust these in slight turns, still going in the same direction. 
I'm going to add preload to each one of these eccentrics. And what I'm doing here is actually feeling the wheels on the inside. And a couple of these wheels are still really loose. The ones that I can feel anyways. So I'm going to go ahead and adjust the eccentrics a little bit more. Alright, so I've got a good lock here on my C-beam. So as you can see, there is no movement here on my gantry plate. So if I pull up on the gantry plate, it's literally trying to pull the C-beam out of my hand. That's exactly what you want, guys. You want to make sure to get this lock tight, but not too tight. It's kind of a, a matter of feeling out your, your pressure on your wheel. Um, it does take some time, so don't get frustrated. Um, but that's a nice lock right there, guys. And we have smooth movement here with our gantry. That looks excellent. All right, so let's go ahead and move on to the next step. All right, guys, so moving forward here, we are going to go ahead and assemble this actuator in full. So we're going to go ahead and locate our 250 millimeter lead screw, two of our C-beam end mounts, eight of our 20 millimeter screws, two of our 8 millimeter bearings, two of our 8 millimeter shims, two of our 8 millimeter lock collars, one of our flexible couplings, two of our 40 millimeter aluminum spacers, two of our 50 millimeter screws, our NEMA 23 motor, and our ball driver set. Alright, so to go ahead and get started here guys, we're going to go ahead and mount our C-beam end mounts to each end of our 250 millimeter C-beam. So as you can see on this end, you have a recessed hole here, and that's for the purpose of the bearing fitting into that hole. So we want to make sure that that's facing the inside of the C-beam here. All right, so let's go ahead and mount that, grabbing one of our 20 millimeter screws here. I'm going to go ahead and line this up with the C-beam and feed it into one of the tapped holes on the C-beam. And we're going to do that for the four holes in total of the C-beam end mount. So let's go ahead and get that done, guys. All right, perfect. So let's go ahead and move on to the next side. And same exact thing, guys. Let's go ahead and get that done. All right, excellent. So now we have both of our C-beam end mounts in place. So now we're simply going to take our motor now and add our flexible coupling here to the motor shaft. Make sure to locate the flat portion of your motor shaft and this is for the set screw to lock on so you have a fixed position here on the motor shaft. Let's go ahead and grab your flexible coupling taking notice to uh, the different sized holes. We're going to use a quarter inch bore to attach to our motor shaft and the 8 millimeter side is going to go ahead and attach to our lead screw. Let's go ahead and slide this onto place. Make sure you leave space in between the motor and the flexible coupling here. Generally, I just try to lock it onto the end of the flat portion of the shaft. So line that with your set screw here and tighten that down. And then we have a screw here on the other side and we're going to tighten that down too. All right, perfect. So now we're going to go ahead and attach our motor to the top portion of our actuator. So that would be this right side here. So if you see the open builds insignia here on the plate, we're going to go to the top portion of that. So let's go ahead and take two of our 50 millimeter screws. And we're going to run these through the bottom two holes here on our motor. Then let's go ahead and add our 40 millimeter aluminum spacers. And then we're going to go ahead and attach this to our C-beam end mount. So you're going to see two holes here, and that's for the purpose of mounting this motor. So let's go ahead and get that done, guys. And 
all right that's perfect so now that we have that nice and secure make sure you tighten that down all the way guys now we're going to go ahead and run our lead screw through the bottom portion of our actuator so run this through the CB min mount and then we're going to go ahead and add our additional parts starting with our 8mm bearing our 8mm shim making sure that the flat portion of the shim here is facing your bearing so you see you have a rounded side and a flat side make sure that that's facing the bearing guys then we're going to go ahead and add our lock collar in your kit you're going to see that the set screw comes separate all you have to do is thread it into the lock collar and this is going to actually lock on to your lead screw so make sure you do that alright so now that we have those in place we're going to go ahead and keep these on this side and run our lead screw until we meet the anti-backlash nut block once you do you're going to rotate the lead screw to the right and it's going to thread through alright perfect so now that we see our screw protruding out of the other end we're going to go ahead and add our additional parts starting with our lock collar on this side our 8mm shim and our 8mm bearing alright continue to feed that through basically we're going to meet the flexible coupling and then we're going to tighten down the rest of the system alright so we're at the flexible coupling so now let's go ahead and lock in our bottom portion pieces here our 8 millimeter bearing should lock into the slot here the c-beam end mount and you want to make sure you put pressure on the lock collar before you tighten it down to make sure you really get a lock on this uh, lead screw so let's go ahead and tighten that down now so as you can see my bearing is fully inserted into the c-beam end mount so let's tighten that down and another thing to take notice to is how my lead screw is inside of the C-beam end mount. That's precisely what you want guys. You don't want any excess hanging loose. Because that would mean you don't have a proper connection here to your flexible coupling. Alright, so we have that bottom portion locked in. Now we're going to go ahead and work our way to the top portion. Same thing. Put pressure here on the lock collar and then tighten it down. All right, now we're going to go ahead and test the lead screw. Just basically pull from side to side, see if you have any play. You shouldn't have any play, guys. So if you do, you're going to have to reevaluate tightening your uh, lock collar. If you need to, adjust the angle of which you're tightening the lock collar because these, uh, these threads are pitched. So sometimes in order to get a proper lock, you just need to tilt this lock collar to the side. But there's no movement in that system. That looks good. Alright, so now we're going to go ahead and move on to the flexible coupling. Tighten down our set screw to the lead screw. Go ahead and rotate that, and then we're going to tighten down this additional screw. Alright, perfect guys. So now when you move your flexible coupling, you should see movement in your gantry plate. This thing looks excellent guys. So we're utilizing our double wide gantry plate here our flexible coupling and motor mounting configuration to create a strong actuator here guys the wheels are running on the insides of the track for convenience and aesthetics this looks excellent so good luck on your future builds and we'll see you next time